I turn the lights out before I left my flat today? What have I seen that actor in before? And where the hell did I leave my keys? These are questions that have plagued humankind for as long as anyone can remember. <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> <clears throat> I personally have trouble remembering where I need to be unless I uh, constantly check my calendar. And I never remember anyone's birthday unless Facebook reminds me. <laughs> and I almost forgot completely to submit a theory to this very conference. So the question I want to answer is, why can't I remember anything? The answer, there's simply more risk to my survival from, from remembering things than from forgetting them. So my study hypothesized that having a good memory increases the amount of animosity and wrath an individual receives from their peers. <laughs> to exemplify this, imagine you were to witness a mafia hit where the killer was never caught. Then a couple of years later, you bump into that hitman. Recognizing them can be fatal. <laughs> I was actually worried about how crap my illustrations would look until Zach's. <laughs> <laughs> so your body language will completely betray you. Your eyes will widen in surprise and fear. Your jaw might drop, and before you know it, you're their next victim. <laughs> it takes effort, a practiced poker face, to remember, but to not get caught remembering. Another example. We've all been to one of those social gatherings or parties where one of the guests remembers an embarrassing moment from years before that ev everyone else would much rather stayed forgotten. Um, but they can't help but bring it up, resulting in that person being ostracized and never being invited back to, to parties and ultimately dying alone. <laughs> <laughs> Forgetting, on the other hand, is very easy to get away with. Firstly, if someone really obviously forgets something important, then there's an unspoken social contract for us not to call them on their forgetfulness on the understanding that they would do the same for us. Secondly, names. Names have a very special kind of unimportance to our memories. Raise your hand, for example, if any of you can remember my name right now. <laughs> <coughs> not many of you. Anyway, this uh, forces everyone to refer to everyone else by various pet names, which makes things easier and also increases social bonding. <laughs> this includes people in relationships, <laughs> families, <laughs> friends and acquaintances. <laughs> it's even become the norm for people getting married to need a minister standing by to remind the happy couple of each other's names. <laughs> The only people who kick up much of a fuss when we can't remember names these days are teachers, but since they're not even allowed to punish their students with beatings anymore, then there's less risk for the survival of forgetful people than ever before. <laughs> the benefit of having a Swiss cheese-like memory is that you can make feel more, people feel more comfortable around you, because they know you'll forget, for example, that time you lo they loudly farted in front of you thinking it would be a silent one. They have the confidence to talk with you and not worry that they might say something stupid because the shame will only be fleeting before they know you've forgotten all about it. This, of course, helps them to feel more comfortable mating with you without the worry that you'll take too much note of how funny their face looks as they climax. <laughs> so for this study, an experiment was conducted to confirm some of my suspicions. There were 10 participants randomly selected from the experimenter's circle of friends. <laughs> They were randomly assigned to one of two groups. Individually, each participant was then regaled with a set of three anecdotes in a random order. So those in group one would be told two fake stories and one embarrassing anecdote from the, the experimenter's own childhood. <coughs> <coughs> those in group two would be told three fake stories. This was a control just on the off chance that, for whatever reason, everyone in group one happened to remember the embarrassing anecdote. The participants were then made to watch Total Recall on DVD, after which they were asked to <laughs> recite the anecdotes they could remember. So once each participant had either recalled or failed to recall the embarrassing anecdote, a metric was used to measure just how much the experimenter wished they could hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> this was rated on a suffering scale of, from 1 to 10 as follows. So none at all, name calling, Indian burn, ear flip, <laughs> Black eye, broken nose, broken limbs. <laughs> it was honestly quite difficult determining which way round I should order those last two. <laughs> and here's how everyone did. Red being those who did not recite the embarrassing anecdote and blue being those who did. It can clearly be seen that people who recalled the, and recited the embarrassing anecdote tended to score much higher on the ill will metric than those who did not. Well, for the most part. <laughs> Some people are just that intolerable regardless. 
So it's evident that remembering is something that can indeed increase the amount of animosity against a person and any null hypothesis may be discarded. Further research is already underway to determine the extent that forgetfulness may protect an individual in other ways, as well as increases chances while dating. If there is a flaw with this experiment, it's that the experimenter was not permitted to actually inflict any harm <laughs> as desired upon participants. This could well be a source of reduced ecological validity since the participants may have felt too safe, which could have unknown repercussions on everyone's memory. Thanks for listening. Thank